definition of the word thing. Now this might seem strange that I would be saying what the definition of the word thing is or what relevance that has to anything, but this will be important for the video I'm about to make. There are actually five definitions of the word thing and content with God or whatever the fuck your name is. I hope you're watching this video because obviously you didn't really look in the dictionary or if you did, you only saw the one of the five definitions that you wanted to see. I had said to him or slash her that atheism is not a religion, it is a thing. When I say thing, I'm, I was thinking kind of like a state of being or and or and and or a condition that kind of thing well looking here at the web well actually this is dictionary.com on the internet thing there's a couple that kind of go with what I was thinking when I said atheism is a thing but this one comes the closest a fact circumstance or state of affairs. It is a curious thing. Content for what's his face. Let me let me go back to his little his slash her little comment that this person made. And I'm sorry, it annoying as hell. This is like a month after the conversation ended and suddenly there's this person writing obnoxious notes on my on my ch channel about something this was clear back um, when I did the Boy Scouts video I did a couple Boy Scouts videos anyway this person <laughs> who I am not getting to their note because I really wanted to say what they said about the word thing okay here here we go here we go this is what they said Oh no, that's not what they said. <laughs> I have to go even further. I have to go to the actual... Oh, I uh, just made a bunch of obnoxious comments. Okay, what I wrote. Actually, you're sorely mistaken. This is what I wrote a month ago. Atheism is not a religion at all. It is a thing. If you don't believe that God exists, you are an atheist. How, how clear, how much more clear can I be? If you do, you are a theist. Look it up in the dictionary, please, before making absurd statements. Content, <clears throat> content with God, as in stagnant, as in not bothering to question any, anything further. He, he came across this and he's content. So he's just going to stick with it, never mind if it's true or not, writes, I did in Webster's Dictionary. The same Webster who has gleefully gone down in history as the man who could quote the entire Bible, both chapter and verse. Woo! What does that mean? What does that prove? By the way, atheism is not a thing can you see it can you smell it can you touch it can you hear it i recommend you look up the dash definition to the term thing guess what content with god i did and you know what there's five of them and if you kept reading you would find that the one that i read completely fits what I was using it for in my sentence. But since you can't seem to see past the first sentence, probably the same way that you are in the Bible, um, I changed my word, I wrote him back, and changed it to condition. My comment back, whatever. I also don't, I also don't believe in leprechauns, fairies, and unicorns and you would find that perfectly acceptable. Your double standard is showing. As for, oh he had also written something about creation science <laughs> and I mentioned that there's uh, that those two words contradict each other and there is zero evidence for creation just like there's zero evidence for God. So okay that's the intro to this video that I'm about to make um, having to do with the difference between religion 
and being an atheist. Okay, an atheist is somebody who doesn't believe in God. I could say that yes, there's belief there. There's a belief that you don't, there's a belief that gods don't exist, yes. You know, oops, there's a belief that I can't control my camera too. There's a belief that gods don't exist. But content with God wants to take that up a notch and accuse atheists of being that atheism is a religion. That's what he that's what this person really wants. I don't know. Maybe he feels like, you know, if 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 atheists are going to um say that religion poisons everything, well atheism needs to be a religion too, I guess. Um but it isn't a religion. There's absolutely nothing about atheism in common with religion. Aside from the fact that there that there is a belief, yes, we do not believe that a God exists. But we don't go on. I mean, we, we, we go on our merry way. We live our lives um, without God in it, without the whole need to have a God, without the whole need to feel that we're going to some happy place when we die. You know, we don't live for a future existence on a cloud. We live in the world as it is right now, and we enjoy every day, accepting that this is our one life that we get to have, and that's it. When we die, we're gone. So, you know, maybe we appreciate each day that we have a little bit more, but that's it. We, we don't, aside from the fact that a lot of times atheists are put on the defensive by people like content with God who want to uh, accuse us of this twisted whatever I'm sorry I, twisted is deluded way of thinking um, it's not a delusion to not believe in God it's just and I'm going to stick by this word it's a thing as in a condition <laughs> Like having brown hair is a condition, or having big feet is a condition. It's a thing. We are all born atheists. We are all born empty slates when we're little babies. If if not for the indoctrination and um, the par the parents deciding, or the society deciding, or forming, or molding that child's um, belief system, you know, if in a in a in a empty room or whatever, um, in, a, in a society where there's no religion, that child would grow up and continue to be an atheist. In a society where the predominant religion is Islam, that child would grow up to be a Muslim. In a society where the predominant religion is Buddhist, the child would likely grow up to be a Buddhist. Or if they're born here in America, most likely they up to be a Christian it's you know it's it's like it's it's all having to do with the environment and who that child's authority figures are who they who that child's afford authority figures believe in or what I should say his or her authority figures believe in because really, when you're being told something is true by the authority figures in your life, you're going to believe it. You know, same same as when you're, and I do think this whole Santa Claus myth is just pre preparing a child's mind. It's like it's like preparing the field for the sowing of the seeds of religion. That's what the Santa Claus myth is. It's it's stimulating the the magical thinking that's required to to be a um, believer in in the supernatural. So I think I actually think that a child who doesn't grow up with the whole belief in Santa Claus is probably more likely. I mean I don't know. This is just my thinking. I could be wrong, but I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to bet that a child who grows up without that whole myth fed into them from a very young age about Santa Claus, I bet that that child would be more likely to not believe in God later. But anyway, it's it's the starting point. I'm trying to think of the word that other atheists have called it. It's the, the f well, it's the, um, <laughs> 
It's what we all are before we believe in something, before we're made to believe in something, before we're given enough information to convince us that something is true. We're all atheists. And atheists don't work at being atheists. It doesn't require any work to not believe in God. There's, there's no evidence for a God. So it's the most effortless thing in the world to not believe in a God. It doesn't require faith. It doesn't require that I go to a building once a week to get my batteries recharged so I can go another week not believing in God. It's absolutely as effortless as breathing or sleeping, although sleeping isn't always effortless. That's not a good example. But anyway, neither is breathing actually for some people who have lung diseases, but for a healthy person it's as natural and easy as breathing and sleeping. Um, a religion, a religious person has to work at the religion. They have to work at, at strength. I mean, when I was a Christian, we were always told to, you know, read the Bible is like putting on God's armor so you're, so you're able to defend you're able to fend off the blows of the enemy. You're you're strong against the the um, you know the attack of Satan or whatever. Of course, Satan would be um, us atheists who don't believe in God, or you know always always there's always the threat that one of us might um, say something that that gets past the the carefully built up armor of the of the Christian that the Christian has to continue to build up by reading the Bible like Bible me daily or daily Bible me every day whatever that stupid website is you have to read the Bible every day you have to memorize all these verses you have to have it constantly cycling through your head you know you got to sing songs like we did at Bible camp sing songs twice a day until until 50 years later well that's an exaggeration 40 years later, you can still remember those songs word for word. I'm an atheist, and I remember those songs that I sang at Bible camp word for word this long after I sang them. Um, it's all for a reason. It's all to reinforce the belief. It's like, you know, and, and uh, just the whole, you know, don't listen to secular music, listen to Christian music, read Christian books, go to Christian apologist pages, and <laughs> I'm sorry, I almost, it's hard to say these two words together, creation science pages. <laughs> and only read that stuff. Don't read anything by, by um, any, any scientists unless they're Christians. Don't read anything about religion unless it's by a Christian. I mean everything is all you know you don't want to stray beyond um, this little this little there's walls that you can't go past because you don't want to risk your faith it's like it's like you have to constantly guard and protect and and reinforce and and recharge <laughs> and you don't want to stumble you don't want to falter you don't want to doubt you know you don't want to question it's all these things that you have to keep working at to keep your faith strong you know because that's what's that's what's important is being strong and da 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 you know that's a religion when you have a book and and you and you have <laughs> um Carefully, you, you know, you've picked out a denomination that that adheres to particular verses that you that you find really good in a book, and yet still, ninety percent of the book that you that you carry around with you is something you haven't even bothered to read, because those few verses that your denomination that you that you have preferred to to go with. Those verses are what you need. Those are the ones that they, they say, now turn with me to page such and such, da 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 da. And you just go skipping past all that stuff that doesn't have the highlighted uh, paragraphs until you get to familiar territory where the pages might be torn a little bit and they've, did, they've not only been highlighted but there's parts that are underlined and circled in red and arrows pointing. 
Maybe you've written some notes along the side because somebody's uh, interpretation, because, you know, that's more important than what the words actually say. Oh, this might actually really sound... No, 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 no. Jesus isn't... Right here, Jesus isn't really saying what it sounds like he's saying. He, this is a parable. So anyway... Christianity is a lot of work. When I was a Christian, it was a lot of work. Even even when I wasn't going to church, it was still a lot of work. You know, it's like I was always thinking about how, how does, how does, because I dug for fossils and I was, a, I, you know, I was always trying to mesh my, my religious beliefs with what I, because I had a fascination for science, but I was also a Christian. So it was always a kind of a challenge to put those two together. It's like two pieces of a puzzle that don't quite fit, but you know, you're kind of cramming it, trying to cram that piece in there so it'll fit, you know? So you come up, maybe, maybe you, you kind of come up with your own variation, your own little twist to, I used to say, well, you know, Creationism doesn't contradict science. That's what I used to say. And I used to say that the Bible technically is just a really vague um, description of evolution, you know, and how the planet started. It's just very vague. It's like how God would tell really primitive children, you know, children, little people who don't understand. That's how, that's how God would explain the majesty of his creation is he would, he would, sum it up in, into something that's very simplistic and childish and that's when I was a Christian that's how I explained the contradiction between creationism and evolution and and what I knew about the, the, the birth of the planet. Now I know a little bit more because as an atheist I've actually read Genesis and I understand that that isn't true that that, that it's not that things are things appear completely out of order <laughs> from how they would have, you know, I'm sorry, but there's no, in the Bible, there are trees before there's a sun. That doesn't work. But anyway, so, I've, I've been a Christian. I know what religion is like. I know what it's like to have a religion. It takes effort. It takes work. Once you have a belief, you don't want that belief to be jeopardized. You don't want that belief to be shaken up. You don't want that belief to be to be knocked down. Um, not having a belief in God is as liberating and free as it gets. All that that you had to go through before evaporates. There's no more. I mean, the only thing that I that makes atheism, being an atheist, anything like being in a religion is like people stick together, you know, people who come from the same background, people who speak the same language, you know, have you ever noticed people who, if you, if you ever like ride the bus or something, you, you get two or three people that meet up that all speak Japanese, they might sit together on the bus just so they get to talk uh, for a little while in their native language, you know, they'll stick together. Um, and the same thing with religion, if you have a room full of people and some people are Christians and some people are Muslims you're gonna probably find the Muslims will will want to go talk to other Muslims and the Christians will go over here and want to talk to other Christians so yes atheists are guilty of seeking out other people who believe what they believe who agree with them who think the same way they do that you know it doesn't make sense there's no evidence for it yeah, atheists seek out companionship. They seek out community among other people who think the same things they do. That's just human nature. That doesn't mean it's a religion. If it was a religion, we'd have to go to a building once a week. We'd have to have we'd have to have certain things that we <laughs> there'd be dogma. There'd be stuff that we'd have to learn. We'd have to constantly recharge our batteries. It's not a religion. It's an, it's a condition like, I don't know how to say it so it comes out right. It's a condition like, you know, being left-handed instead of right-handed is a condition. You can't force yourself to believe something. 
You know, if you do believe in something, then you've got the groundwork to becoming religious. If you believe in uh, a supernatural higher power, you're very likely going to eventually fall into one of the big religions. Or maybe not. Maybe you'll, you'll always just be a spiritual but not religious kind of person. But a lot of people who, who have a belief in a higher power will, will eventually fall into, they'll, they'll find a church or they'll find a, a religion that more closely matches what they think about the world. And a lot of it has to do with the society, what society they grew up in. You know, if they grew up in um, the Middle East, most likely their society is going to be Islam and their parents will believe in Islam and they'll grow up being indoctrinated into Islam and they'll be Muslims if they're you know it depends on where you're born really what most likely you're gonna fall into what religion you're gonna fall into but across the board there are atheists all over the world and no matter what part of the world we're born in there are people who just don't believe and it's not that's it there's nothing else it's not it's a thing it's a th I'm sorry but thing is a correct word for what I'm trying to say it's a condition it's a state of being I don't I don't believe in God you haven't convinced me there's a God shut the fuck up it's not a religion it's looking at the real world and looking at reality and saying, you know what, there's absolutely no evidence for a God. I accept that there is no God. I'm not going to make up something because it makes me feel better and makes me fear death a little bit less. And I'm sorry, that's what I think religion is. It's just a, it's just a thing people have to feel better and not have so much fear about death. They like to think that they're going to see their loved ones again. They like to think they might not die. They might continue on somehow when they die. And maybe they do. I am a pretty, I tend to think of myself as a fairly open-minded atheist. I, you know, I'm like, okay, I, don't, I really don't think that a God exists. But maybe there is some kind of afterlife, you know. I honestly don't think that there has to be a God for there to be an afterlife. I don't really think there's an afterlife, but I don't know, and so I'm, you know, it'd be kind of nice if, if there was some kind of afterlife. But then when I think about that, it's like, would, would I really want to live forever? How boring that would be after, you know, after you've done every imaginable thing there is to do and seen every imaginable thing there is to see and been challenged by every imaginable challenge there is, then what do you do? For the rest of eternity, which continues on forever, I think living forever would actually be hell in itself. So anyway, this is me ranting. Um, I blocked content with God. First of all, the name, the, na the name, his his name, right there, tells me there's really no point in trying to converse with somebody who's content. They're they're content. They don't care if it's true or not. They're just content. You know, whatever. So, so, but they come to, to atheist channels and attack atheists, so, um, yeah, I don't like, I don't like being attacked, I don't like having somebody <sighs> tell me that I have, that I'm in a religion, when I'm sorry, I was for a huge chunk of my life, and for the first time in my life, I am not, and I think I know the difference, I think I can tell the difference between being, oh, it's very frustrating when somebody acts like they they know you better than you know yourself. You know, I'm sorry, but I am not in a religion anymore. I don't believe in a religion. I, I don't adhere to any religion. I just don't believe that there's such a thing as God. Like I don't believe in leprechauns or fairies or unicorns. It's no different. So anyway, I had to rant. This guy slash woman question mark question mark really got me pissed off. So thanks for watching if you have. Bye.